All right there, another video today about mini discs. Now, I made a video a year and a half ago with regard to how to add track titles to mini discs without using a PC. I went through various different techniques and technologies. In fact, one of them was this over here, this nice little QWERTY keyboard, this infrared keyboard from Sony that was there for that exact purpose. Because what happened with mini discs from its launch at the end of 92 onwards, was that you get uh, music onto your mini disc either by buying a pre recorded album or more likely you'd record something onto it either via the optical input or via the line input. And by doing that, you just end up with a mini disc full of track numbers and then it'd be down to you to add the track titles to them. Now, all that changed at the end of 2001. The product had been on the market for almost a decade and Sony did basically a relaunch and update to it and launched NetMD. Now, NetMD allowed you to connect mini discs to PCs, and that then enabled you to get your MP3s or whatever was on your PC ripped CDs, convert them across to the A track format, and write them to the mini disc via USB. And for a number of years, I used to acquire my music via various means or rip CDs, and then copy them across to my mini disc and listen to my music that way. Now that went on for a number of years, of course, eventually I moved across to a separate MP3 player and then listened on my phone. And it's been a long time since I've connected a PC up to a mini disc player. And I thought it's time to rectify that. In fact, I think it's been about 15 years since I did it. Now, back in the day when I first started doing it, I used a piece of software called OpenMG Jukebox, and that then changed to Sonic Stage. The last version that was compatible with Minidisc was version 4.3, came out in 2008, and at the time Windows Vista was out. Now, if you try and get that software now, put it on a modern PC running the latest operating system, uh, Windows 10 or 11, it, it won't work. Well, it works up to a point. In my experience, I got the latest install of it. You can find it online through the Internet Archive. And I downloaded it, I installed it, and it would only let me burn CDs. Whenever I connected this thing up to my computer, it just didn't notice it was connected. The drivers loaded in fine. Every, there was no issues, no errors, but connect it up, ignored it, and therefore the software couldn't write to this. Now, it would be very possible, I'm quite sure, with a bit of time and effort and the right knowledge and the right drivers and a lot of messing about to get that software working. And I'm sure people would want to tell me how to do that, but don't because I don't care because I don't want it working. It's n not a good piece of software nowadays. It's an old piece of software and it does things I don't need it to do. And there's now new modern day replacements that do the job better. And that's what I'm here to talk about today. Now, the most well-known of these is a web app. It's called Web Mini Disc. It was created by Stefano Brilli. It runs within Chromium browsers and it's completely free to use. Now, I first became aware of this, I think when it first appeared, it was perhaps a couple of years ago now. And I immediately got out my mini disc recorder, connected it up to the computer, loaded up Chrome, loaded up the app, and unfortunately, it didn't work. It wouldn't connect to my mini disc. I thought, well, these are teething troubles. After all, this is just an amateur project. I'm sure there'll be updates come along in time. And I just put it to one side. Now, ever since that date, every few weeks, I'll have somebody contact me and ask whether or not I've heard about it or whether I've tried it and it, what I think about it. Does it work? All that kind of stuff. So I thought I should really try and get back to it at some point, and that point is now. And it's perhaps a good time for me to have a look at it again, because back when I first tried it, I just had that N707, which didn't work. Since that date, I've accumulated quite a few more NetMD compatible devices that I can connect up to my computer, which I think gives me a better chance of having one that will work with the app. So let me show you what I've got. OK, so I'm going to be using these four devices. We'll start off with the portables. The first one of those is the MZN707, my old machine from 2002. This connects up to a PC through its USB mini B socket. Now, the other Walkman I'm going to be using is the MZS1, again from 2002. This was part of Sony's sports range. And again, this also connects via a USB mini B. Now, next, we've got the funky looking LAM1. This is a CD mini disc combo unit. It can copy from the CD to the mini disc. It's designed to sit on a desktop beside a PC. It connects up to that PC via USB B. 
and that connection can be switched between being for NetMD or a USB speaker mode. It was only sold in the Japanese market, where it was also available as the LAMZ one, and that came bundled with a pair of active speakers. And finally, we've got the MDSNT1. This is a stripped down PC accessory that's intended purely for handling your NetMD reading and writing tasks. Unlike the LAM1, the only way to get the audio onto the mini discs inside this is via a computer that's attached through that USB B socket on the back. One thing I didn't realise until I made this video is that I now happen to have, purely by chance, three out of four of the Japanese launch range of NetMD devices that are shown on this picture. The other one is currently sitting on a shelf in the corner of the room. Now the fourth item that's shown, the Walkman, the MZN1, that's the first NetMD portable and it's best avoided due to reliability issues. You'd be better off with a slightly later machine. Now if you're ever picking up a minidisc machine, it's always worth checking to see if the minidisc wiki has a page about it because you can gain some useful information. For example, the N1's USB connection was in its charging dock, so if you don't have the dock then you're stuffed if you want to connect that one to a computer. Anyway, let's get back to talking about the new NetMD software options that are available. Now, since the last time I looked at this app, it's been updated. There's now a version called Web Mini Disk Pro that adds more features. So therefore that's the one I'm trying to use. And I'm using it within the Chrome browser here because it's a Chromium based web app. It doesn't run within say Safari, for example. I mentioned that because I've got an M1 Mac attached up to this monitor here. That's the one I use for my editing normally, but don't panic Windows people. I've also got a Windows PC here running Windows 10 and I'll mention more about how it all works with that in a moment. But I'm starting off with the computer that I use more often than not. And I tried it with this N707 and unfortunately it didn't work. It uh, came up with some weird reboot issue where it just kept going briefly into USB and then disconnecting over and over again. Didn't seem to be doing it any favors. The disc kept spinning. So I thought, oh, don't want to keep that going on. So I unplugged it quickly and moved on to the next one. I then went on to the NT1 and that one, well, it came up with an error message and wouldn't connect. So I thought, mm. moving on, I went on to the LAM one and that acted the same same error message wouldn't connect not going very well so far went over to this machine the s1 sports mini disc walkman and it connected just fine as it should do no problems at all so now out of the four machines i've got here i've got one that's working and therefore i'm able to give you a bit of a demonstration of the software so let me show you how it works Okay, so during this demonstration, I'm going to put some music that's currently on MP3s onto a mini disc. First, you have to connect up your device, and once that's connected, if it's got a disc in it, the table of contents gets loaded up. Of course, you'll want a disc with some space on it, but you can always add or remove tracks to an existing disc. You don't have to start with a blank one. You can then click on the plus sign and locate the audio files on your computer that you want to copy onto it. You've then got a few options. Probably the most likely one you want to alter is the recording mode. I'm going to go with the SP mode here, and I'll explain later in the video why that's probably the best choice. At this point, you can then alter the formatting of the titles. There's nothing here that I want to change, though. This is what's going to show on the screen on the mini disc. So I could have just skipped past that point and pressed OK at the bottom, and that then starts the whole process running. Now, since I started off with MP3 files, these have to be converted as they're copied across. Copying, of course, isn't as fast as you might be used to nowadays on more modern equipment, but you've got to bear in mind this is a 20-year-old device that used USB 1 and it's writing to a disk, so it's really doing the best it can. I'm going to fast forward a few minutes, though, to get to the end. Once the whole thing has been copied across, I just need to add a name to the disk, and that's the job done. Now, after the table of contents gets updated, your mini disc is ready to go. And if you want to delve into some of the more advanced features and options in the software, there's a comprehensive user guide available online that covers everything. Now, with only one out of the four devices working on the Mac, I thought I should move across to the PC to see if I had any more success there. This is running Windows 10, and of course, uh, the software is a web app, so it looks exactly the same on Chrome here as it did on the Mac. I tried it on Microsoft Edge on here as well. It ran just fine on that. The only difference here is when you connect your mini disk devices up to the PC, it needs a driver for each one. Now, there's a piece of software called Zadig. There's instructions for this online, very simple, but all you have to do, just plug your device in, run Zadig, click one button, it gives that mini disk player a suitable driver. 
it remembers that from then on. You don't have to do this every time, just the first time. So every time you plug it in from then on, it'll just be recognized. Now I've got four different mini displays here, so I had to go through that process four times. But each one of these, when you plug them in, they're just recognized from then on. And the benefit of using them on the PC is that they all work within the software perfectly. No problem at all. No issues. You might be able to make out from the text on the screen there that the MZN707 is connected up at the moment and it all works perfectly. It was at this point, I remembered I had one more NetMD machine in the house, the Sony RH1. This is the High MD machine. So I tried connecting this up, worked fine here, worked on the Mac as well. So I've now got two devices that work just fine on the Mac. So uh, I'll go back to that in a minute. But as far as the RH1, this is the only one that Sony brought out that enabled you to get the mini disc audio off the mini disc, download the tracks, they download as an AEA file, which is an A track file, which is an unusual audio format nowadays, of course, but you can play it within VLC and you can convert it into something more usable. Now, the important thing to add here is that whilst back in the day, it was only that one machine that Sony allowed you to download files from, a machine that is now rare and expensive, you can now do the same thing with a variety of Sony and Iowa NetMinidis Walkman. For example, here, I'm using the MZS1 Sports Walkman. Now, initially, this was a feature they'd only managed to get working with the A-Track S machines, but this is something that's been updated while I was making the video, and it now works with A-Track R machines as well. Now, with A-Track S, the downloads are pretty quick. With A-Track R, they're pretty slow. But the important thing is that it does work and it allows people to get the audio off their old mini discs and into their computers without having to resort to just recording it across. Now that got me back to the Mac because I'm thinking, well, I've got everything working fine on the PC, which is great, but most of my audio is on the other computer. It'd be nice if I could get all these things working with the Mac. So I went uh, doing a bit more experimenting to see exactly what it was that was causing the problem and if there was any way to get around it. Up till this point, I've been connecting the USB-A plugs off the devices to the USB-A ports that are on the back of an M1 Mac Mini. And as I mentioned, there were two devices worked that way, the other ones didn't. Now, when I plug this into a breakout box, which is connected up to USB-C on the Mac Mini, they worked. And I thought, that's a bit odd. So then I traced it back and I found that if I just put a USB-A to USB-C adapter on the end of that, and then plug that into one of the USB-C ports on the back of the Mac Mini, which I've just done there. I've connected the NT1 up. If I just press connect now, it appears on the screen. I can connect up to that. And in a second, the track listing should appear on the screen. So yeah, it turns out that the USB-A ports on the back of a Mac Mini just aren't compatible for whatever reason with all these devices. The one that didn't work was the 707. It still did that weird rebooting thing, whatever port I used. Now, I believe these are a little bit different. I've read up some things online where there's some things that just don't seem to be compatible with the 707. It might be like an early version of the NetMD software or whatever, but whatever it is, if I wanted to use this, if this is the only NetMD device I had, I'd have to use it with my Windows PC. But as it is, I've got all these other devices which connect up just fine to the Mac. So I did find the solution. It was just a little USB-A to USB-C adapter, and now they work just fine. Just a couple of extra things to mention about Web Mini Disk Pro. You can use it as a standalone app if you use the Microsoft Edge browser. That enables you to download it into a little package of an app that you can then keep on your computer so you don't have to use it while connected up to the internet and you've got your own little version saved safe on your computer in case the other one disappears for whatever reason. That's the version I'm using here at the moment and I've put it in the dock at the bottom there as an app at the moment this one is showing what's on the nt1 the only other thing i want to mention is that the sp mode on this app is actually better than you got through sonic stage sonic stage had a weird way of doing sp recording the best quality on a mini disc by um, using the lp mode and somehow padding it out. Basically, if you'd recorded your audio into your mini disc recorder via optical and recorded in SP, it would have sounded better than if you'd have done the same thing by putting the file through Sonic Stage and then putting it onto your mini disc recorder. So, SP is better in Web Mini Disc Pro than it was in Sonic Stage. However, because they're having to get around the codecs that are all kind of 
copyright or whatever, they had to use various other methods to produce LP2 and LP4 in Web Minidisc Pro. So those ones don't sound as good as they would have done if you'd have done them through Sonic Stage. So basically, just record in SP for the best quality. And again here, I've got to jump in with an update to this video because during the course of making it, there's now been a new way implemented to record in those long play modes that enables the same sound quality as if you'd recorded with the original Sonic Stage software, and they do that by using a separate encoder. There are regular updates to this app. This video is only a snapshot in time, so for the latest information, I suggest you read the online documentation. Now, I just want to talk about another app that's called Platinum MD. Now this is a standalone app. In the brief amount of time I had to use it, it was working pretty much the same. It's got a nice interface on it. Uh, I say brief amount of time because it just stopped working. After a while, it wouldn't negotiate with any of my NetMD devices. It just goes into this state where it's attempting to connect and never manages to do it. And I played around with it a little bit and, and I thought, well, there's no point because the previous thing, the Web Mini Disc Pro, that works just fine for me and you can download it as a standalone app. So I've got no need to mess around trying to get Platinum MD to work. But if you wanted a standalone version and uh, you had either Windows or Mac, it might even be available for Linux, I'm not too sure. But uh, yeah, give it a go if you want. But the previous one worked just fine for me. So I'm just going to give this short shrift and say, look, it does exist, but it isn't working for me so I can't really comment on it anymore. So let me move on to the last app, which does something that these two don't do. This is an excellent piece of software called NetMD Wizard, and it performs the task of getting your CDs onto your mini discs all in one go. The previous software we looked at was about getting files copied across, uh, whether it was MP3s, FLAC, Wave, and various others, it would convert them into A-Track and copy them. Well, this starts with a CD, it rips the CD, then it converts it, then it copies it across. Not the quickest process in the world. I mean, it takes around about, for me, 20 minutes to get a CD onto a mini disc. Basically, just set it off running, go and do something else, come back, and it's done its job and it's worked absolutely perfectly. One thing it does is pull through the track titles from the online databases, puts those onto the mini disc, of course, as well. So it reminds me of a piece of software I'm sure Sony had back in the day that did the same thing, this kind of simple copier device. That was the one I tended to use the most because I'd just go and buy a CD in a shop and then just copy it across to a mini disc so I could listen to it while I was out and about. And it wasn't such a chore just to copy it the first time you got it. And then from then on, it was on the mini disc. A very handy little piece of software. So basically what we're doing now in 2020, 22, I'm able to use my NetMD devices just like I did back in 2002, so 20 years ago. Now, whether or not anyone nowadays wants to use their NetMD devices like they did back in 2002 is down to them, but it's good to know that you can do it. Rather than these things being obsolete and being useless, you can still use them exactly as they were intended. And that's all down to some very talented and dedicated people who've chosen to spend their own time and a lot of effort in getting NetMD devices to work with modern operating systems. And that's something that Sony themselves had given up on back in 2008. So you've really got to be thankful that there are people around like this and they're not asking for any money in return. They're just happy to keep NetMD alive. And it's something that I'm very much appreciative of. But that's it for the moment. As always, Thanks for watching.